Assassin's Creed 1 is one of my favourites in the Assassin's Creed series. So in today's video, we're exploring the dark and twisted world of Garnier de Naplouse, the twisted doctor of Akka and one of the assassination targets of the first Assassin's Creed. Assassin's Creed 1, released all the way back in 2007, takes place during the Holy Land in the middle of the Third Crusade. Players assume the role of Altair, a skilled assassin tasked with eliminating key members of the rival Templar Order in order to reclaim his lost honour. One of these targets is Garnier de Plus, a twisted doctor who makes his home in the city of Acre. Garnier de Plus is the Grand Master of the Knights Hospitalia, a religious order dedicated to providing medical care to the sick and injured. However, beneath this noble facade, Garnier conducts horrifying experiments on his patients, using them as test subjects in his twisted quest for knowledge and power, or so we're led to believe. When we arrive in Akko, we need to perform an in-depth investigation to uncover more about who Garnier is, what he's planning, and how best to take him out. We learn that Garnier hides behind the walls of the Hospitalia fortress in Acre, so that's where he'll be. He removes himself from the world around him, oblivious to anything while he's busy tending to his patients. The only problem is, how do we get in? We can learn that some of Garnier's personal guards have abandoned their posts, meaning that archers patrolling the roofs are at a disadvantage. As well as this, we learn that Garnier lets his patients roam the halls of the fortress freely, and nobody save some scholars may enter. We also learn that the Hospitaliers are replacing all the Candleburrs within the fortress, which allows us to use them to navigate the rafters. As well as this, four of them are situated above or near some of the doctor's patients, so we could use this to our advantage. So now we know where he is and our options with getting in and taking him out, but we can also pickpocket a letter which mentions something rather odd. It reads, Master, progress is slow. We should endeavour to reclaim what's been taken from us, or I fear we'll be discovered before we have a chance to act. My work on substitutes shows some promise as certain local flora can be used to induce a similar state. Be warned, however. The effects are only temporary and subjects tend to develop a resistance requiring increased dosage. Unfortunately, they can only take so much before exhaustion claims them. I've lost too many in this manner and it breaks my heart. Your man in Jerusalem should be commended for his diligence. My supplies remain sufficient and I am no longer forced to use locals, helping to defray suspicion. I do worry about our loss in Damascus. Though I have sufficient arms and armor to continue for a while longer, he will need to be replaced within the month, however, or our soul Soldiers will be forced to wield table knives, which brings to my next concern. What do you intend to do about our enemy? I fear that the losses we've suffered are but the start. I feel secure enough within the hospital's walls, but it would be best if we dealt with this trouble before it has a chance to bloom. My men are yours for the task if it's required. Merely make your desires known to me. Your brother in peace, G. There's a lot to unpack in this letter. Firstly, we know that Tamir is connected with Garnier and his loss has been felt by his brothers, with the disruption of the arms and armour. We started to cause some concern among them, ruining their plans, but why does a doctor need arms and armour? Secondly, we learn that Garnier is using herbs to try and replicate the effects of the piece of Eden we found under Solomon's temple, yet there's a tolerance build up towards this method and is killing more people because of it. We also learn that there's somebody in Jerusalem who is working with Garnier providing supplies, this somebody being Talal, who is kidnapping people and sending them off to Akka to help with the doctor's twisted experiments. I'll touch on him more in the next video in this series, but for now this is all all we know. There's a bigger connection that's at play here. Once we've finished our investigation and return to the Rafiq in Akka, we can receive Al Mualam's marker and put an end to the doctor's sick experiments. No, help! Help me! Help me! Please! You must help me! Enough, my child. I ask you to retrieve the patient, not to kill him. There, there. Everything will be all right. No! Give me no. your hand. Don't touch me! Not again! Cast out this fear. Elsa cannot help you. Help me? Like you helped the others? You took their souls! I saw. I saw! But not mine. No! You'll not have mine! Take hold of yourself. Do you think this gives me pleasure? Do you think I want to hurt you? But you leave me no choice. Every kind word matched by the back of his hand. All lies and deception. He won't be content until all bow before him. You should not have done that. 
Return him to his quarters. I'll be along once I've tended to the You other. can't keep me here. I'll escape again. No, you won't. Break his legs, both of them. You people, nothing better to do. Once we've witnessed the escaping patient call out Garnier's experiments and having his legs broken out of kindness, we are able to locate the doctor tending to his patients and end his life. Let go your burden. Ah, I rest now, yes. The endless dream calls to me. But before I close my eyes, I must know. What will become of my children? You mean the people made to suffer your cruel experiments? They'll be free now to return to their homes. Homes? What homes? The sewers? The portals? The prisons that we dragged them from? You took these people against their will. Yes. What little will there was for them to have. Are you really so naive? Do you appease a kind child simply because he wills? But I want to play with fire, father. What would you say? As you wish. Ah. But then you'd answer for his burn. These are not children, but men and women full grown. In body, perhaps, but not in mind. Which is the very damage I sought to repair. I admit, without the peace of Eden, which you stole from us, my progress was slowed. But there are herbs. Mixtures and extracts. My guards are proof of this. They were madmen before I found and freed them from the prisons of their own minds. <sighs> and with my death, madmen they will be again. You truly believe you were helping them? It's not what I believe. It's what I know. Garnier is a complex character as he embodies the moral ambiguity that defines the Assassin's Creed series. While his methods may seem cruel and inhumane, such as ordering his guards to break an escaping patient's legs, he genuinely believes that he is helping the people in his care. Garnier's experiments aim to find cures for various ailments and conditions, and he sees his patients as willing participants in his quest for knowledge and progress. We learn after killing him that the very guards in his employment were once his patients, rejuvenated in their mind and body thanks to his work. This perspective challenges players to question the true nature of good and evil, making Garnier a thought-provoking and multi-dimensional adversary. Garnier's assassination is a pivotal moment in Assassin's Creed 1, as it highlights the moral complexities and grey areas that define the conflict between the Assassins and the Templars. And that concludes our deep dive into Garnier de Maplus, the twisted doctor of Assassin's Creed 1. I hope you enjoyed this exploration of his character and the impact he's had on the game's story. Do you have any questions or thoughts about Garnier or any of the other characters in the Assassin's Creed series, be sure to leave a comment down below. Don't forget to like, subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss any future content. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.